All right. Jakob, how's it going? Good. How's it going for you? It's good. It's, I'm really yeah. grateful to have you here. We've chatted a little bit in the past. We're finally recording yes. the podcast. <laughs> yeah, we, we had several uh, tries. <laughs> I think. Yeah, we did. Yeah. But we, but we made it. Um, yes, you made this, it. Go ahead. Oh yeah, this is um, really exciting for me because you have so much knowledge in the content space and um, you have a lot to say and we don't have too much time. So I'm going to jump into it. But first, it would be really great if you could introduce yourself uh, mm -hmm. for our listeners, um, just what you're up to right now, who you are and what you do. Mm -hmm. So my name is Jakob. I'm a content manager. So I'm, I'm helping small and medium enterprises with the content strategy. So I have business consultants, um, business owners or coaches, trainers who, uh, who I help to create more content so that the, the products and the services are more visible. That's my, my main focus. So I'm born and raised in Germany. So um, for 16, I wanted to become a journalist. That was my goal. So I wrote down all my goals and the things that I'd like to do, like writing, publishing, traveling. And then it, I found this uh, this job description about journalists and uh, wanted to become one and I worked as a digital editor and um, worked in the journalism space but after a couple of years I, I the whole thing moved more into the direction of content management because journalists are very good in writing and storytelling and, and explaining a good story but they don't think so much about monetization models or how to start your own digital business so I was, I wanted to know more about this topic. So uh, the whole thing moved more to becoming a content manager. And yeah, and this year I also started my own business and it's completely digital. So I'm as a consultant helping small and medium enterprises with their content strategy. Yeah, that's Love in a it. nutshell. <laughs> yeah, perfect. We're, you're going to talk about content strategy. Um, a lot today, and I think what we're going to cover, I know you have a lot of experience with building trust, and that's something that, mm -hmm. you know, your journalist background probably really helps you with, um, probably storytelling. What do you, what else do you think um, helps you or has helped you to build the skill of building trust online? I think the most important thing is that you have to forget your products and your services and most uh, mainly focus on your target audience. So to help the people that you want to help and actually help them <laughs> without uh, focusing too much on your product. That's, I think, one key thing because many people, especially in these days, they are very, they are pushing their agenda and they're pushing their message, but they don't forget about the, the problems and the struggles that the that their target audience has. And this is something I think, I, um, especially as a journalist, you're thinking about your reader. So what 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 they are what are their struggles? What what problems do they have? And how can we help them to overcome these struggles? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Good point. And like when I know exactly what you mean, right? Like telling uh, clients, for example. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you have this great offer, but stop putting <laughs> out this crappy content that's all about you and start mm -hmm. making it about the clients. Do yes. you have do you have any difficulty trying to get your clients to see things from that point of view? Yes, of course, all the time. So uh, at the beginning, it's always like, like a tension. So you have to convince them almost that they have to create um, uh, content that has nothing to do with them. So forget all the, all about this hero marketing. So I'm the best. I'm the biggest. I'm the strongest. So. Uh, tell stories that are related to your target audience that makes maybe you also vulnerable so that you uh, show weaknesses that's also fine if it's if it's uh, included into your content strategy this is uh, totally fine but many struggle with this what else do you think they struggle with i know my clients um my clients struggle with like thinking that they're posting too often or um, yeah. worrying that their content isn't perfect. Do you have other issues that you've encountered? They, they think after one month producing two podcasts, it has, I, they have to find a sponsor, for example. <laughs> it has, yeah, or yeah. They're, posting one, they're posting one video and they're thinking, this is not going viral. Uh -huh. Why? <laughs> Things like that. So um, I think you have to be 
it's like it's like a skill and you have to and, and the weird thing is when it comes to digital skills everybody thinks it's like in the matrix that you put a stick a usb stick and then you have all the knowledge all the experience but you you have to train the people you have to train yourself also uh, for these digital skills that's that's the important thing and many don't realize this that it takes effort <laughs> that it takes time <laughs> Yeah, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes failing. You yes. know, people people want to look good online. You know, everyone's posting their yachts and Lambos and stuff like that. <laughs> or, you know, their perfect family or whatever it is. And everybody wants to look good and to, to look. I think sometimes, do you know, like, you know, when um, people go the opposite direction, you know, everybody looks mm -hmm. really good usually. And then some people, they're like, oh, I have to look vulnerable. And I have to look like I... Um, yes like people should trust me and love me and like feel closer to me. So I'm going to share something, but then they go like too far, like overshare <laughs> yeah. in the other direction. And it's like, Oh God, that was way too much information. Um, yeah. I feel like people need to find a balance in the middle, not yes. showing off some fake stuff, not oversharing. Yeah. They need to find I somewhere think, in the middle. Yes, absolutely. I think it's a yin and yang. So you have to find the balance between both. Think it like, and diary you don't have to share 100 percent of the things that you are writing down <laughs> into your diary so maybe 80 percent is enough so, mm -hmm. keep some yeah. secrets yeah it keeps yes <laughs> yes that's true yes. and do you think there's um like a in terms of finding that balance to build trust online is there a a process that you use to help people decide what they should do like what type of content they should produce it, it comes down to your target audience. That's always the thing. But I recommend video. I mean, these days, I mean, through Corona, many people are forced to stay at home. So they are surfing. There are much more businesses uh, going online and many don't do it. And people are not sure, can I trust this person? Who is this person? Can I trust him or her? And I trust somebody when I see him or her. So I would recommend to start with video and video is for many people, many people are scared to stay in front of a camera and to speak. But I think in the long term, if you can, if you can um, train your video skills in front of a camera, this is the most, the, the best thing that you can do, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And that's also what I always recommend. Some do it, some don't, which is fine. I, I'm, I feel a little bit, uh, strange when I say video is a trend because I already started uh, 10 years ago. So my first uh, job in a TV station was 2009. And I realized there already, okay, I must be good in front of a camera. This was a must for me. And since then I'm, I'm practicing it and it's not perfect, but I'm becoming better. And that's the most important lesson also for the people who are watching this. You become better when you do it. That's that's the most important thing to remember. Yeah, there's so many times in like different situations in life yeah. where we're looking at doing something and we're thinking about it and we're waiting and um, you can't really, most of the time you can't get good at something unless you actually do it. Yes. Um, no matter Indeed. how many books you read about making videos or how many TikToks you watch or whatever, like until you practice and you put something out there, mm -hmm. that's when you start, like things have to start. Yes, I really believe in the iterative process so that you do and improve during the process. That's, that's, that's key. You, it will be not perfect and there will be, <laughs> there will be bad videos. So I interviewed Brian Bogart, who's a high performance coach from the, from the US and he's doing really good videos and he said, sometimes i also mess with my videos so and when he says this, says this then everybody nobody has an excuse everybody should stand in front of a camera and practice the skill because it's learnable it's like it's like yeah it's like a hobby you have to train it you have to do it often and again and again and then you will you, you will improve yeah i absolutely agree with that and i think in terms of content as well um, I said this on a, a another podcast, you know, if you're creating one piece of content, whether it's a video or whatever, every week, 
uh, then you have at the end of the year, 52 videos and, and yes. you, you've had some practice. It's great. But if you create, you know, three videos a week, exactly, you know, or try to do a, a thing where you do it once every day, not only are you building your skill, you know, you're doing three times more, you're getting three times more, um, pieces of content, you're building mm -hmm. your skill and you know, if you're posting every day on any platform, it's going to love you. You know, you're, yes. the algorithm's going to love you. You're going to get tons of um, traction, followers, clients, whatever you are looking for. Um, a lot of times, the more you post, the more successful you are on yeah. different platforms. Yes. Like Gary V says to post like 40 or 50 times a day sometimes on different platforms. Yes. Yes. I don't know that I agree with that. That feels excessive to me. What do you think? So Gary has, a, I mean, he polarizes people, <laughs> that's, a, yeah. that's for sure. But I like him and I also uh, respect him within the industry because he's, a, in my opinion, one of the big, uh, big guys. And um, I, I also read his uh, this PDF, you mean, where he um, explained how to create, I think, 64 pieces of content for each yeah. day. Yeah. So I think, well, I mean, when, you, when you're starting, and somebody gives you this plan, <laughs> he, he will be overwhelmed. So I think when you're like for people like for us, it's I think we, we have to check it and challenge this. And in my opinion, there are many parts which I, which I think are very, are very good. For example, he doesn't say that only quantity is the most important thing, but he, he, um, he, he, he posts and then he watches what is happening. So this is something that many people miss. They just push. They push their content, and but they don't. They don't like when people are commenting their posts. So I, I always like uh, the the people who comment my post on LinkedIn, and I also thank thank you, and then I mention the name. So I think this is something that many people forget that it is not only posting, but also what's what's happening after the post. So are you? getting in contact or in, in, a, in a communication with the people. So this is something that Gary uh, is doing very well. He's liking it or sharing it or answering the comments. So mm -hmm. um, he's not only saying you have to push and uh, post as, as, as much as possible, but you also have to uh, look what is working and can I, can I uh, work on, on a specific topic? Because for example, um, how to raise your children. This was never a topic for him, but he realized that many of his uh, younger uh, users, this is a topic for them. So they are asking uh, about um, their parents' uh, questions and he started to uh, post about the, this topic also. So it, it, he, he's, he's getting information from his community, reacting and creating new posts. So, mm -hmm. so that's the reason why the people love him so much. I think mm -hmm. that's very smart. Yeah, that's one thing that's always been amazing about Gary is he interacts with people and he finds yeah. out, you know, what, what they're looking for and how to help them. And yes. everything that I, from everything that I've seen, it's about being available to serve your people yes. and um, just doing whatever it takes to, I mean, he's like texting people in the middle of the night. He's got thousands of DMs and he's trying to get through <laughs> as many as he can all the time. It's like, uh, it feels like a lot, but I know when I started out, I just felt already really overwhelmed just with a few emails or something. Mm -hmm. um, and, and with him, it just is such a good example uh, of never being too uh, high and mighty, I guess, you know, never feeling like you're above people. He's always really mm -hmm. humble. That's a really big yes. thing with him. Um, so in terms of answering comments, what do you think about communicating with your fans? Like what are the best ways to communicate? Do you have any ideas about how to get, like start more conversations? So asking questions is one important thing. Uh, maybe being also polarizing. So um, polarizing statements that you mentioned within the first line. So the headline is always the important thing. Uh, what worked for me well is also, um, uh, name uh, so writing down the name of the person so uh, and at linkedin you have this add function so that you can tag this person so because it's it's human we are we are conditioned to to 
yeah, be curious when our name is mentioned somewhere. We want to know it. And so it, uh, it, it is an easy entry to start a conversation, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so for people who are starting out with their content, or maybe they're just, they've been in business a long time, but they haven't really, they know they should be doing more content. What are your tips for them mm -hmm. if they're feeling like, oh, holy crap, there's just so much to do? So if they didn't start yet, right? Well, um, if they're starting out with content. Ah, okay, yeah, I would, I would start with a podcast. So this would mm. be the easiest. So if, you, if you're starting out, because the podcast, it, it's the easiest to pr produce because you can record like this Zoom call, you can take the audio and you can publish it on your podcast host and you already have one episode. So this is a very good starting point uh, podcast because you get, you, you, uh, get in connection with like-minded people you uh, you speak with them you interview them and maybe they become your clients because i mean you're spending one hour very close uh, asking questions and then uh, recording this and publishing it so maybe they also become your dream clients you never know so this would be my my advice that you start your own podcast related to your business so if you for example if you i mean my uh, con my podcast is content marketing mastery. So I'm focusing on the area of content marketing because that's my area. But you you can focus on your area and start your own podcast. That's that's a, that's a great thing. Yeah, and for people, I know in those types of groups where people say, um, oh, I'm thinking about starting a podcast. Yeah. And then they're waiting like six months, you know, and they want to get their podcast art and they want to hire a audio editor and um, they need to find out you know how sponsorship works and which mm -hmm. platform they should host on there's a lot of, i mean listen there's a lot of questions when you're starting out yes. um and you and i can go oh we can start a podcast in one minute you know <laughs> it's like really easy yes. to do you just get, grab an app record yourself push publish but some people want to overthink that do you have any advice for them yeah, just do it. I mean, just instead of listening to this episode, start your own podcast <laughs> would, would be my advice. I mean, this is also something that Gary V uh, says in some of his speeches. You, don't, you say to me, you don't have time to create content, but you're listening one hour of my speeches. Stop mm -hmm. the speech and start to create content yourself. So it's always, I think, yes, you have to know, you have to know some guidance, but don't overcomplicate the things. So you need you need a mic, you need some recording tools, you need a podcast host, and then you can start. That's basically. Uh, and your mic can just be your iPhone mic. Yes, definitely, absolutely. I mean, Zoom is exploding. Use Zoom for 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 the call uh, for the for the recording, and then you have an interaction because you don't can maybe you can do a solo show where you use you you just as one person speak to the mic or you can do an interview format like we are doing yeah i mean i did this little um podcast or or a uh, facebook post one time that was like how to start a podcast in one minute get this yeah. phone get your phone get the anchor yeah. app push record yeah. say something push publish you've done your first episode it's out <laughs> of the way like it's yeah. that's it so that's it's like cool. now you have a podcast it's already up and you yeah. have to wait until like, and usually you can say like, hey, uh, my name is Beck and I'm starting this podcast that's on content marketing because I have mm -hmm. this agency and I really love content and I wanna share with you the best way to create content. Uh, so you can expect from me like to post once a week, uh, at either an interview or just with me, but giving you tips about, you know, posting better social media content. Okay, I'll see you next week. Boom. It's- that's um, it. Yeah, exactly. And I think we've, we're, because we see so much stuff on online, we lose the, uh, the action, right? We lose our action. It's like, oh, well, um, yeah, I know I need to do the podcast, but I'm just going to watch a few more videos. And uh, it's, you're right, it can be done so quickly. And podcasts are a great way to get started. 
What yes. I know you have your podcast. What's it called again? Content Marketing Mastery. Cool. Well, anyone listening should go check that out. Um, and Thank tell you. us a little bit more about how people can work with you. It's just one thing that I wanted to say because of the thing of we are concerned is overrated and action is underrated in these times. Mm -hmm. So I would, I mean, yes, we need some guidance, but just trying it, trying it and doing yourself is the most important thing, I think. And th this is, I wanted to add to what you said just, just a minute before. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. You've got to try it um, and experiment as well. Cause it's not, yes. you know, you're not going to go viral in the first episode. Just put some, <laughs> put some something out there. I tell this story actually a lot on my podcast is like I used to do stand up comedy and yeah. um, I was really impressed with one of my shows, like my third show or something. I was like, yeah, that was really good. And the MC comes up to me in the green room and he's like, yeah, dude, that was good. But like, don't just forget all of these ones that you're like, forget all these shows because you're going to be shit for 50 shows. Like you have to after the 50th one, then you can start like getting good. But he said, do 50 shows and then we'll talk. And okay. then I was like, oh. so, so the main lesson was get your, 50, your first 50 very fast. <laughs> I think the same way about podcast episodes, videos, yeah. blog posts, just, just shut up until you've done 50. And then mm -hmm. you're allowed to say, oh, like this isn't working or, oh, I don't really like this or, oh, yeah. this like, cause people always do two and complain. Yeah. That, you them too. You, yeah you will be all uh, everybody is messy at the beginning everybody yep. so nobody's perfect so the most important thing is to start yep, yeah exactly and so um where can people find out more about you and, and just tell us uh, how they could work with you as well yeah so um yeah my website is uh, called contentmentoring.com so um i there are more information about me and i also have this uh, free white paper where i uh, show steps how to create content yourself um contentmentoring.com or also on linkedin under my name under my full mm. name and yeah so um i help um business owners with their for example i create social media postings or i write blog articles or i give them strategic advice so things like we are talking about today how to start their own podcast. This is one thing. Or how, um, yeah, how to monetize their knowledge. So how to create a membership site and uh, sell more digital products or how to create the ebook, things like this. And yeah, that's basically what I'm doing with, with clients. All types of things. Yeah. So PR is also one area. So I'm, because I worked also as a di digital editor in the past, I know how journalists think and I know what they need in the press releases, what kind of pictures they need. So that, that's also something that I do for business owners when they want to get um, attention of traditional media. So to say newspapers, magazines, online platforms or TV stations. Awesome. 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 Yeah. And who, who are you? Who is your um, target market? Who do you mostly work with? So business consultants, coaches, in the B2B area, so service-oriented uh, consultants, yeah. Cool, awesome. Um, well, that is that pretty much wraps up the show. Uh, it was so awesome to have you on here. Jakub, Thank you for having I, me. I uh, love chatting to you. You have <laughs> yeah, such, a, such a knowledge of uh, content marketing, and I hope that uh, we'll talk to you again. Certainly, I'll see you next time when I'm on your podcast. Yes, um, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.